Alright, this video is about the resistive multi-touch pad that I put together. That's a very quick demo, but first I want to go over the materials that are used to make membrane keyboards, keypads, and resistive touch pads first. So there's conductive inks that are pl placed down. Many of them contain silver, gold, nickel, or copper. You can guess which ones cost the most and uh, have the higher performance. And then there's resistive inks. Uh, usually it's carbon. That's the workhorse. It's been used for at least 30 years. And then there's some other interesting ones like antimony tin oxide, which is semi-transparent, and that's used in displays. There's other non-ink type of conductors like indium tin oxide that's used on transparent screens, so it's a transparent conductor. All right, so this material goes down like regular ink. This is some carbon-based ink, uh, resistive ink, used to repair circuit boards. It can be silk screened in uh, kind of a standard process, much like making a t-shirt. You can print on multiple sides of a substrate, which could be rigid or flexible. You can have vias that go through to connect top to bottom. You can print on rubber if you want to make, for instance, rubber buttons. So that went to this, which when you press that down, it would make contact to this particular pattern, which would make a row column connection. There's also materials that might be interesting to us, like these high density foams that are high in carbon. They're actually um, very low resistivity compared to other foams. And uh, there's op open cell and closed cell versions of this stuff with different kind of compressions. And it can also be put on rigid substrates like this toy here. And these little button places here have had carbon silk screened on to aid in making the connection when these rubberized carbon buttons are pushed against it. Okay, so I think I've covered most of silk screenable conductors and resistive materials. Well, wait, there's one last thing. So here's a piece that I cut up and this shows a carbon strip in a particular pattern, but it also has silver laid on top of the carbon to lower the resistance so a connector hooks on over here and then comes up to the carbon. So you can do little tricks like that by adding silver traces. Here's another example of it. Here's some resistive touch pads and it has silver traces going around so that you have a uniform resistance across that. And that's going to be important in uh, my next explanation here. So, my first experiment, and this is what I suspect a lot of multi-touch resistive pads are made like this. You have silver conductors that make columns that come down, that make contact to resistive carbon, which is silk screened on, very much like this, or like this see this. Um, you can actually print this stuff very close together. Here's an example of some very fine lines printed. So those are printed in this pattern for your columns. And then layers are added, silk screen down to insulate certain areas. So you can put polymers down so you don't get shorts between your top layer and your your lower conductors in places you don't want them and also you can put bumps that keep the, the two the two pieces separated slightly so they're not making connection until you actually push down so and then you would have a top layer which would be some kind of flexible membrane that would have uh, row uh, connections and when you push it would push down make contact along these resistive uh, columns. And then by grounding and then activating 
each of the rows or columns at a time and then sensing the output you can determine which location is pressed. Now if there's sufficient resistance between each uh, row, for instance in this one here, you can determine if there's more than one press at a time. So that's pretty important that you have enough resolution in your system to be able to determine if two adjacent rows or columns are pressed, you know, depending on your configuration of what's resistive or not. And so that's what I tried here. I cut up some of these resistive touch pads that are out of some toys that I worked on and I did a three by four and that worked really well. Um, it didn't scale very well because there were so few pixels and I didn't want to go through all that. So I worked on a different scheme which I actually found some literature out there. Some folks have done stuff like this before which use a substrate that has a top and a back side or a top an insulating layer and an under layer that has different connections. So the way this works is you have columns which are solid conductors that come down. Okay. And then on a, another layer, whether it's the insulating layer or the bottom layer, you have traces that run across, pop up through, and touch pads that are isolated. So these are all silver. There's no resistive material on there. You can buy material that's high in carbon, like this foam that I was showing you earlier, or I used anti-static uh, bags. So these are used to hold circuit boards to prevent them from being zapped by static electricity. And so that's what I put together here. So now I'm going to back up so we can take a look at the demo. So the first thing I'm going to show is the touch pad that's arranged in that configuration of uh, you know, columns and, and pads that pop up. All right here it is, right here. So on top is the resistive plastic, high in carbon. I have some trimmer resistors, which I ended up not using. So I have rows and columns configured in here. And up here on the screen will be the, the result, uninterpolated, just raw um, values as I press down. So the harder I press down, we'll see a value from 0 to 16. I didn't do a lot of resolution on the pixels. And this has 8 by 5 pixel elements in it. And they're fed into an analog to digital converter and then into an FPGA which is generating the VGA signal. I'm kind of getting out of order here but that's what this is. Very simplistic. Um, uh, any microcontroller could do this also. I use FPGA because I can work in that um, domain much faster. Alright, so if I push on here you can see up on the screen that there's pixels lighting up. If I lightly press down, you know, there'll be less intensity. If I press down hard and spread my finger across more pixels, more of them light up and brighter. Now if I take two fingers and push on here, now there's multiple touch points. I can even do three, um, kind of the limit of the number of pixels that I've got. Okay, and behind here is my absolute brain-dead, linear interpolated, only in the horizontal direction um, uh, algorithm. It's nothing special. I only did the horizontal location so I didn't have to have a line store. And this is all being generated on the fly. There's not even a single temporal frame being stored. So if I put my finger on here we can see I've doubled the resolution by doing linear interpolation in the horizontal direction. So um, one could imagine you could increase your precision of your analog to digital converter from 8 bits and do some more complicated 
interpolation in both axes and add some clipping functions to it and have um, far more resolution. All right, well, I better cut this short. I think I only have 10 minutes on YouTube. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later.